All right. Apple, cherry, or pumpkin pie. All these choices could be just fine. But if I look in my heart for the favorite of mine, you'll know it's got to be 3.14159. You caught me. It's March 14th, pie day, and I'm dreaming of both the edible and numerical types. The one you can eat and the one that has fascinated mathematicians for a round 4,000 years. Today, we're going to be talking about the number pi, which can actually be found in the edible version as well. See, pi, the Greek letter that looks like this, is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. This means if we draw a circle, measure the perimeter around its outside, the circumference, and then measure the distance across the circle through the middle, the diameter, and then divide the two, we get pi. Okay, so what's so special about that? Well, no matter the size of the circle, we will always get the number pi when we divide its circumference by its diameter. What's also interesting is the fact that pi is what's called an irrational number. No, this doesn't mean that pi is lacking in sense or about to throw a fit in the grocery store. Instead, it means that it can't be written as the ratio of two integers like the number 0.5, which can be written as one over two, or 0.333 repeated forever, which can be written as one over three. Pi never repeats, and it doesn't ever end. These features are what makes it an irrational number. And when we say that pi doesn't end, we really mean it. Mathematicians have been studying pi for centuries, and a supercomputer recently calculated pi to a whopping 62.8 trillion digits. While pi can be found in many places, it's most often used in calculations involving circles. But what makes it fascinating beyond its long history in mathematics are all the different ways its value can be calculated. As far back as 2000 BCE, the Babylonians and Egyptians were aware of pi and what it stood for, even if they couldn't accurately calculate it. Their closest estimate to pi was the perimeter of a hexagon inscribed inside of a circle with a diameter of one. Why a diameter of one? Because if the diameter equals one, then circumference equals pi times diameter, which equals pi times one or circumference equals pi. Now, six, uh, since the hexagon is made up of six equilateral triangles, and since the radius of a circle is half of its diameter, then each piece of the hexagon's outside length is one half. And since there are six of them put together to make the full hexagon, we have six times one half, which equals three. It's not quite pi, but it's close-ish. Now, they actually used a ratio of hexagon to circle of 24 over 25, and they got a slightly more accurate value of 3.125. The ancient Egyptians used a ratio of 256 to 81 and got even closer, 3.16045. Next, the ancient Greek mathematician Archimedes, 200 BCE, used similar geometric principles to further investigate pi. He started with a circle with a diameter of one. Then he drew a hexagon, or six-sided shape, inside the circle. Now he added another one outside. He was then able to calculate the perimeter of the two hexagons using different geometric principles of the time and concluded that the perimeter of the inside hexagon would be slightly less than the circumference of the circle as it's smaller because it's inside and the perimeter of the outside hexagon would be slightly bigger than the circumference of the circle because it was on the outside and bigger. So the circumference of the circle had to be somewhere between the two hexagons. He could then estimate what the value of pi was, meaning the circumference of the circle divided by its diameter. In order to be more accurate, he, he used shapes with more and more sides, 12, then 24, then 48, and finally 96 and he got closer and closer to the shape of a circle. He actually got pretty close too to the value of pi with 3.1418.
But up until about the 1300s, the closest people could get was about seven decimal places. Then, in 14th century India, Madhava used the known starting point of pi, 3.1415927, and tried a similar type of method to Archimedes by going above and below what he knew in order to find a more accurate representation of pi. He used some geometric principles, but he approached it using an infinite series of numbers. Specifically, he used this infinite series. He started at four, a number above pi, and then added and subtracted fractions where the denominators were odd numbers. Going above and below, adding and subtracting, he was able to calculate pi to a much, much closer value, accurate to 11 decimal places. Of course, supercomputers can now find pi to 62.8 trillion digits, which is what is fascinating about pi. It's not so much in its value as in the challenge it provides in calculating it more and more accurately using different and faster methods. Plus, there's always the fascination of pi as a never-ending, non-repeating number. There are a ton of websites out there where you can have fun with pi, including one where you can find your birthday and its digits, and you can also see pi written out to a million digits, though be ready for a lot of scrolling. And remember, the largest value of pi currently is 62.8 trillion digits, which is a million, million times bigger than a million, or one with 12 zeros after it, instead of one with six zeros after it. So if you were to try and count the value, the current accurate value of pi, and you started at the very beginning of the universe, counting one number per second, you still wouldn't be done by now. Pi is also special because it's found wherever you find a circle or wherever science is explaining waves. It's even encoded right into our very DNA and patterns of life around us, including how an animal's spots or patterns in their code are defined. One last reason why pi is so great is because it's also included in what's known as the most beautiful equation in math. So no matter what type of pie you love, the kind you calculate or the kind you eat, there's no question that the number pie is the most versatile and well-respected one of them all. Plus, unlike pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving, you'll never have to worry about it running out. <laughs>